welcome back class to the second half of lesson 30 so in this part we will discuss a broad overview of hydrograph method for estimating peak runoff so we discussed hydrograph a little bit like you know it's a graphical representation of river discharge with respect to time so the picture I showed you earlier that started from zero, but this one is not starting from zero. I will explain the uh, reason later, but let's discuss a little bit about this simple storm hydrograph. So this hydrograph, like uh, as we said, the, the hydrograph is a graphic representation of river discharge with respect to time that means with time what amount of discharge uh, we can get uh, from the river after a storm that is actually the hydrograph so initially there will be very very small value but with time uh, as more area will contribute to the flow to the outlet the discharge will increase with time at some point it will reach to its peak and from that point, we can get the peak runoff after doing some calculation. So once the uh, rainfall stops, obviously the flow from the river outlet, it will start decreasing and at some point it will be again same as the initial point. So this increasing trend, that one is called the rising limb. This point, that is the crest where we can get the peak flow and uh, this, uh, this part that is actually called the recession limb. Now you can see from this plot, we can get discharge at any time. Like I want to get the discharge at this, this time, I can just draw a line here and get the discharge. If I want to know the discharge at this time, I can draw a point here and get the discharge so basically we are not getting only the like peak discharge at the same time we are getting the discharge at like any time so basically we are routing the uh, runoff using this hydrograph so why we are having uh, like two like why we don't have uh, the hydrograph it is not starting from zero uh, if we watch this video uh, that will uh, we will get the answer so this is the video link which i will show you right now so this is the setup from our fluid lab uh, for rainfall runoff uh, lab where you you have to establish the relation between that so at some point you will do this lab so let's watch that video uh, for a few seconds and then we can discuss more. Now, uh, this is the same setup what they did. They actually made uh, a river uh, on that bed and they supplied a constant uh, flow, okay? So you can see that is the river, only the river flow is going here, no rainfall, nothing. So this like they are trying to uh, remaking a real river so here this flow is kind of uh, like you will have a river flow all year long maybe a little bit less or more uh, except the dry period so that is the river flow okay there is no rain no storm nothing at this point so that is the river flow so after some point you will get a constant river flow so after few minutes, if there is a rainfall, so using a rainfall simulator, we can add the rainfall. So at this point, like after the rainfall starts, we have actually two type of uh, flow here or two sources of water here. One is the river flow and one is from the rainfall. So once you collect, the final outcome of this river from here you are actually getting the summation of river flow plus the flow from the rainfall right so 
that's why we don't have a zero here because this is the river flow like before any rainfall happens so after the rainfall with time we are getting runoff 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 or extra uh, extra flow extra flow extra flow and at the end uh, when the rainfall stops and all the water from rainfall is gone, again, we are getting the river flow. So if you want to know more about this experiment, you can watch this video. Now, basically, the storm hydrograph, if we split into two parts, we will have this one, just the river flow. That is actually called the base flow and we will have the runoff like the excess water which the soil couldn't absorb so we are having that runoff so basically this hydrograph is the summation of direct runoff hydrograph plus base flow hydrograph so base flow is actually uh, the river flow a stream carries base flow during most of the years this comes from the groundwater and this one will not change with time that much you can see it's kind of constant but based on the storm or rainfall we will have on the watershed this shape can be changed but the general shape is something like that okay and this is called direct runoff hydrograph or drh now all the time like from uh, uh, for rational method and nrcs method we got the runoff as a like a uh, discharge like cubic feet per second or meter cube per second so if we want to uh, know the runoff depth it's like you know the drainage area so basically the runoff depth will be the depth of water over that area so if we want to calculate that how can we do that we have to find the runoff volume over the drainage area, right? And that is actually called the equivalent runoff depth. Now the question is how can we get the runoff volume? That is very easy. Since we have this hydrograph, what we can do, if we can get the area under that direct runoff hydrograph, this one, that will be actually the runoff volume. Okay, now this one, the area of this one is you have to split this whole area into small part and you have to get the summation of discharge uh, multiplied with delta time and that will give you the runoff volume and if you divide by the drainage area or watershed area, basically we are getting the equivalent runoff depth or the depth of runoff. So for discharge, uh, the unit was volume over time for time that is the time and drainage area is area so basically time time got cancelled if you divide by volume or by area you will get the depth just simple math okay so if these uh, like the run of depth like if I go back to that this slide that run of depth it can be like any magnitude it can be 5 inch it can be 10 inch it can be 12 inch 20 inch whatever but if we can get that equivalent run of depth as one like one inch or one centimeter or one millimeter this hydrograph is called the unit hydrograph because the depth is a unit like one centimeter, one inch or one uh, feet or something like that. Now that is the like most understandable definition of unit hydrograph, but we will know more about the unit hydrograph. So this unit hydrograph, this concept was introduced in 1932. And if we want to define this one, so it can be defined as a direct runoff hydrograph observed at the downstream limit of a basin due to one unit of rainfall excess, like one inch of rainfall or one centimeter of rainfall falling for a unit time TR. Okay, 
So the next point is like the unit of rainfall excess is taken as one inch or one millimeter or one centimeter as I said. That unit time it can be 24 hours or less based on the uh, drainage area. It can be six hours, it can be two hours, it can be 24 hours, something like that. But it must be less than the time of concentration. And now how we can actually name the unit hydrograph based on tier, if the tier is 24 hours, we will name that hydrograph as 24 hour unit hydrograph. If it's 12 hour, we will say that 12 hour unit hydrograph. And that is the uh, hydrograph of runoff. You can see again starts from zero because there is no base flow here. And that is the rainfall intensity, okay? So let's discuss uh, some characteristics of unit hydrograph. So, what is the use of unit hydrograph actually? Just think about any area or any watershed. They, their features, they do not change from like storm to storm or day to day basis. So if we can produce a unit hydrograph for an area, it's like the unit. So we can use that for different purposes, okay? So, and since for one area, the storm pattern usually doesn't change. So we can use the unit hydrograph to calculate other type of uh, hydrograph as well. Just think about this one. Here, we had one inch or one millimeter of precipitation excess for the period of TR. Now, for some reason, if we, like after we develop this one and after a few days there is a rainfall, the intensity of rainfall is not one inch or one meter, rather it's like two inch or two meter. So we don't have to measure the flow again. What we can do from this hydrograph, we can actually get the hydrograph for two unit uh, rainfall, just the magnitude will be higher. At the same time, if we can get uh, two consecutive storms, like one unit after a few minutes, like few hours, there is another storm, and obviously they will, uh, like, like if there is any uh, overlapping of this storm, how can we get the discharge or runoff from that watershed, we can do that using the unit hydrograph as well. So that is the first one A. After some time lag here, there is the second one. So at any single time, the magnitude will be the summation of these two unit hydrographs. So that's how we can use the unit hydrograph to calculate uh, some other hydrographs as well. It has some limitations. So this hydrograph, this concept shouldn't be used for watershed much longer than 2,000 miles square or 5,000 kilometers square. And this concept doesn't apply for the runoffs or anything from snow or ice, though United, uh, like the Army Corps, they actually use the same method for the runoffs or anything from snow and ice. So, that is the end of second part uh, of the lecture 30th. And thanks for watching this video.